Hi, I'm Robin Sewell and I do the tours here at St. Anne's. Now one thing that I'm often asked is how did J.E.H. MacDonald come to be named head designer for this amazing group of murals? And one thing that we do know is that MacDonald was a member of the Toronto Arts and Letters Club and he had often spoken many times about the need to have Canadian artists decorating Canadian spaces. It was one of his pet peeves and apparently he used to say that if Giotto and Michelangelo lived in Toronto, Giotto would be unemployed and Michelangelo would move to New York. Now, uh, it is believed that Ken and Ski was also a member of the Toronto Arts and Letters Club, so would, he would have known uh, MacDonald socially. And when he conceived of this grand scheme of decoration, MacDonald was the logical choice to ask. Now, apparently MacDonald was possibly intending to do the whole thing himself, but he ended up asking his friends and co-workers to help out, and so in the end, 10 artists worked on the church. Now, MacDonald wrote that when he first looked into the dome, it was like looking into a big brown hole. Uh, the whole interior of the church was kind of brown, unpainted concrete, and so uh, in consultation with Sir Charles Nicholson in uh, St. Paul's Cathedral in London, and uh, discussing this with Ken and Ski, they came up with the whole scheme of things. So one of the many things that MacDonald asked to have done was to cut back the gallery which jutted into the church and obstructed the view of the dome. His idea was that the decoration of the church should bring out the size, the height, the architectural features of the building. So uh, he had the dome painted a dark Venetian red and a little dog tooth design went up the spines of the dome to emphasize the height and the shape of it. Although uh, our dome is modeled after Hagia Sophia in Istanbul, their main dome is over 180 feet high and ours is about a third of that, but it does look very grand now. Now, MacDonald decided that all of the paintings should be as uniform as possible, and right from the beginning, he decided that they weren't gonna work in their personal style. Uh, this would not be a reflection of the Canadian landscape. Uh, in keeping with the architecture of the building, he chose to have the paintings done in a very flat, uh, colorful style, uh, looking back to Byzantine art and other early Christian art. Now, they didn't go with a purely Byzantine style because they were pretty sure that that wouldn't be appreciated by people here at the church. It tends to look very stiff and rigid uh, with staring eyes. And so they went with a slightly later, maybe down to Giotto style, uh, more illustrative. But there are some features that do tie it to the Byzantine. Uh, you'll notice that the background of all of the paintings has a little golden grid work to remind us of Byzantine mosaics. And it was decided that all the halos uh, would be uh, gold and that they would use gold throughout the pictures as much as possible. Now the colors are all very bright and they used a common stock of paint. Basically they had six colors plus black and white. And uh, the other thing is that they went with uh, very large figures and uh, very shallow depth. Uh, the background is only suggested. Uh, your focus is on what is happening with the people of the Bible stories. Now, uh, MacDonald did little cartoons, little sketches and ideas, which he gave to the individual artists and they worked on them in their own studios, not here at the church. And pretty much everybody followed McDonald's directions, but he chose to do three of the paintings himself. And so we're gonna look at them individually. Now, the first one is the Transfiguration, which in the cycle of Christ's life should actually occur later, just before the entry into Jerusalem but it's been given the central position above the altar because of its importance. Now this picture is very interesting. We see Christ with Moses and Elijah on either side, 
And you can see a, a band of clouds running through it, which separates the divine from the earthly, and the apostles are down below. But notice that MacDonald, in keeping with the Byzantine style, only depicts people either frontally or from the side view, uh, keeping everything in the story very clear and understandable. Now, we've already talked and looked at the Tempest, but once again, I want to point out that this is one of the few places where you can see MacDonald's personal style coming in in the swirling water. And again, those clouds in the background. Uh, this picture is full of drama and meaning, and it's no wonder that MacDonald chose to do this one himself. Now, the Crucifixion is one of the most interesting paintings in the church. It is something that I think really inspired MacDonald. Uh, notice again, he has the mysterious clouds in the background, and these help to really uh, make the picture frame very flat so that you're only focused on the, on the figures in the foreground. Notice he has the sun and moon in eclipse, and this is a very, they're at either ends of the cross, and this is a very, very old, kind of medieval almost, early Renaissance uh, symbol for the crucifixion. And down below the feet, there is a skull hidden, which is just MacDonald's way of reminding us that this happened at Golgotha, the place of the skull. And so, in that tiny little detail, he has given us the background and, and leaving us to focus on the figures. Now in 1925, MacDonald wrote an account of all of the work here uh, for the Royal Canadian Architectural Society. And he modestly said that no one who had uh, anything to do with the church would claim great artistic merit for it, remembering you know, the churches of Europe and Giotto and all that sort of thing. He said that the work was undertaken honestly and enthusiastically by a congregation of moderate means and that the church should be remembered for its rarity that uh, here in Toronto that we should have something like this. But I think it's more important than that. And the work is beautiful and it is artistic and even those who are disappointed that it wasn't done in the Toronto I mean group of seven style should appreciate it for what is here that this work of 10 different artists coming together to have a unified vision of what a church could look like now in the weeks to come we will look at the work of Franklin Carmichael and Fred Varley here at St. Anne's but let's always remember that they were working under the direction of J.E.H. MacDonald and that he was the one who had the vision for all that we see here. Hi, my name is Sam. We're here at the Michael Canadian Art Collection. And uh, today we're looking at a painting by J.E.H. MacDonald. Uh, if you look around the church, you might notice that uh, there's uh, quite a lot of red, which you see in this painting. Now, a lot of the works that we have on view currently in a light vision feature a lot of yellows and browns, but this red is particularly unique to this large painting. Um, because the church work was done at an early phase when the group of seven was perhaps still firming up what their particular style was, um, you might see a splashes of indiv individuality in what you see around you, and we can kind of see that here replicated in this painting.